Hey everybody, it's Jamie, and um, for this discussion forum, we're going to work our way through this book right here. It's a book called Special Needs Parenting, From Coping to Thriving, and it's by um, Lorna Bradley. And I bought this book probably three years ago, knowing that at some point I would be able to use it um, in our ministry with our four. And the time has finally come, and I'm super excited. Um, I hope that this encourages you. What we're going to do is each day I'm just going to read little excerpts of this and then leave a thought question. So in the comments on the forum, what I'd like you to do is just to answer that question the best way you can. Be completely honest. I know some of these questions may be difficult, but just be honest. We're all, we've all joined this community. Um, so that we can learn to understand each other and learn to embrace each other even in our difficulties and even in our complete honesty. So um, just be honest so that we can all help each other and so that no one does feel isolated or alone in this journey. We're all here to help each other. So let me begin. I'm going to start with chapter one here and just read a small little excerpt. So here we go. Um, it starts with a verse from Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 and it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It starts with a caption that says, God and special needs. There are a variety of circumstances that set parents on a journey of a life with special needs. Perhaps a complicated pregnancy, difficult delivery, medical emergency, illness or accident when a child was young, or maybe a genetic difference. Whether that awareness came at birth or through a process of discovery later on, at some point each of us had a realization that something is unique about our child. Perhaps he or she did not reach milestones at, his, at the same rate as other children. Perhaps he or she had unusual behaviors, or a pediatrician said, I would like to run some tests. However the journey begins, soon afterward come the visits to doctors and specialists seeking diagnoses, direction, and assistance. Life as anticipated starts fading from view, and a new and different life takes its place. The next caption says, a rose by any other name. Deciding how to refer to people with bodies that function in different ways creates a challenge. There is a varied history of politically correct and not so politically correct descriptions referring to people with special needs. Oftentimes, the best way to refer to a group of people is with their own self-definition. However, there is little agreement. What appeals to some is offensive to others. At a recent conference I attended related to theology and disability, some preferred the term disabled while others cringed. Special needs resonated with some while others preferred unique abilities. One person said she liked to apply the term handicapped to herself which received the response, really? That would hurt my feelings to be called handicapped. My son refers to what I used to call his learning differences as his learning disability. For those whose bodies function more typically, Dr. Amos Young introduced me to the concept of being temporarily able-bodied, point well made. In whatever capacity our bodies are functioning today, Given time, they will come to function differently simply due to aging or injury. For the purpose of this book, a disability refers to a way in which a body functions that is not in keeping with its designed purpose. Eyes are designed to see, ears are designed to hear, legs are designed to walk, and brains are designed, designed to process information and social cues and create appropriate responses. In reality, each person has disabilities. 
some ability that is lacking either due to illness, injury, aging, or a body that simply never had the capacity to do certain things. I can sing, but I will never do it well because that is just how I was born. I run, but I will never, but I will never break any speed records. It is beyond my ability. I broke my foot in high school, with the result that I can no longer dance on point in toe shoes. As I was a dancer at the time, this posed a huge disability. In my everyday life, as a person who does not practice ballet, I accommodate the injury and think of it little, though towering stilettos are off the menu. Lacking a physical dis of lacking a physical ability that others have is not a call to judgment. It is a reality with which each person copes. As we age, we cope with it more and more. For some, coping with disability requires great effort and daily preparation. In using the term special needs, I am referring to individuals who need some sort of accommodation in order to help them be successful in their setting. Some are hearing impaired and their special need is for a sign language interpreter or an assisted listening device. Others are visually impaired and may need help navigating the hallways or need access to large print written materials. Others with cognitive impairment may need lessons to be modified in keeping with their capability. Still others have be behavioral impairment requiring a modification of a social setting so that individuals do not become overstimulated or anxious. The variety of special needs is virtually unlimited. So that's all I'm going to read for today. Um, my question to you today that you can answer in the forum is this. In what way do you name the special needs in your family? What names do others use? What is helpful and what is hurtful? So think about those things as you answer these questions. Um, I'm excited to hear your answers about this one because um, we all need to understand each other. And, and like she mentioned in here, everybody uses different terms when it comes to special needs. And I would like to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I've had some discussion in the past with some parents and everybody has a different angle. So let's just be honest with each other and um, so that we can all understand one another. And those of us who um, do not have children with special needs or disabilities of any kind, we'll be able to understand where you're coming from a lot better and be a lot more graceful when we discuss things with you because I know people do struggle with that. They want to be involved in your world, but oftentimes we don't know what to say or how to approach it because we're afraid of offending and none of us want to do that here. We just want to understand where you're coming from and understand your likes and your dislikes and what makes you comfortable and what makes you feel loved because that's the bottom line. We want everyone in this group to feel loved and to be understood. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoy us or enjoy this discussion as we travel through this book, excuse me. And I hope you also enjoy the discussion questions and just engaging each other in um, and what you think of uh, what we're discussing here. So thank you guys, have a great day.